Yo, what's going on, guys? It's your boy, Ooch. And, of course, we're back in once again. And we're going to be doing this again. All right? We're doing another reaction to a theory. And, yes, we are brought right back to where we pretty much left off because our homie, Turtle Quirk, who, by the way, I actually got in contact with right after um, we recorded the last reaction for the theory about bakugo okay and apparently i was literally told like straight after i was you know going crazy over this theory that there's a follow-up and it's about kirishima or why kirishima was the third user of one for all so this time loop theory um you know it i will actually follow up to that one really quick before we get into this one and of course just for you know obvious measure have not watched it i have no idea what this one is about and this video will most likely contain mad spoilers on the manga, possibly the movie, uh, but more so the manga. So if you have not read the manga, if you're not caught up, there's your warning. Also, um, so yeah, like I said, going forward and following up with why Bakugo was a second user, after letting that theory really marinate and sit with me, um, it, it, it really just makes all the sense in the world that if this actually does happen and it lines up with that silhouette actually being Bakugo, then at least that much of these theories that Turtle Quirk is coming up with are valid. And I'm actually looking forward to seeing if they really come to life in the story of My Hero Academia. Because like I said, that's a huge swerve. It's a huge curve. No one saw coming. And uh, no, need, no, no pun intended for the Persona fans. But uh, let's just get right into this one. Today we're going to explain the evidence and the subtle clues as to why Kirishima was the third user of One For All. Okay, so I'm going to pause it. My bad. One other thing I wanted to say is that um, the, the, the predictions that I have out of this theory um, are kind of similar to how, how could Bakugo possibly be the second user. I feel like with Red Riot, right, or Kirishima being the third, um, and then like if you look at the silhouette where, you know, I'm sure he's going to show it, but... Bakugo, you could clearly tell is Bakugo, but the guy next to him that's we can't tell obviously has a different hairstyle. And one of the things that I can call right off the bat is, well, you know, we see this in anime all the time. Characters always take some kind of physical change, whether it's a hairstyle change, um, a wardrobe change, you know, all those kind of things. So him, whoever, who, if he's commissioning this. Like whoever's the artist, I need these. I need these freaking these renders. Like I just want them, okay? But anyway, let's get back to the theory. And how by taking this power, it may have led to him suffering an unimaginable fate. Now, a couple of months ago, I posted a video explaining why Bakugo was the second user of One for All, and was flooded with comments specifically asking me if Kirishima could be the third. So this video will answer how and why that would be the case, as there have been little hints alluding to it that I'm going to take you through. However. If you've not seen that Bakugo video, then I'd recommend watching that before you watch this one. Yep. But for those of you who like to live life on the edge, let's get into it. <laughs> we all know that One Fall has a total of nine permanent users, right. with Deku being the most recent. And in a recent chapter in the manga, some new information was revealed about some of the previous holders. For example, the fact that they didn't really have strong quirks and that they mostly died at a young age. But it was very interesting to note that two former users were not included in this conversation. Right. Despite searching far and wide, All Might could find no information whatsoever on the second and third users, almost as if there was no existing records of them. That's and on top insane. of that, they were both purposefully blurred out in previous chapters. Exactly. And the placement of this That's speech devices. bubble directly next to Bakugo is probably one of the least subtle hints that Horikoshi has ever given us. Like guys, the bubble is literally touching him and look at what it says. All Might then goes on to say, <laughs> the one was obsessed with One For All and would seek to destroy anyone who possessed the power. And because One For All is a stockpiling quirk, its power is built up through the generations, with All Might being the first and only user of One For All to defeat him. Right. Bearing that in mind, it was not the duty of the previous holders to defeat All For One, but rather as it says in this panel, Past users just had to make sure that their power would reach the future. Where I don't know how this theory is not going to be real, bro. Like, this is this is stuff that my man Turtle Quirk literally, like, paid close attention. Like, I don't... See, I'm mad at myself because I don't know how I missed any of this or why I think... Because I know, man... 
I'm just glad that somebody did, and, he, and they, they're doing they're doing the Lord's work for us right now. Where one day it would be strong enough to defeat him. The past users were not chosen ones, but rather they were the ones trusted by the previous holder. Uh -huh. This ties into my Bakugo theory, as I mentioned that one of the reasons he was sent back in time was to ensure that one fall was created in the first place, thus ensuring that it reaches the future. And that's all well and good, but what next? Bakugo is many things, but immortal he is not. He knew that a time would come where eventually he would have to pass on the power and it would have to be to someone he would trust. And as we saw at the battle in Kamino, there is no one he trusts more to get him out of a sticky situation than Kirishima. Bakugo needed someone he could trust to take the power, survive and keep it safe in a world where all for one reigns supreme over Japan. Flex. And when looking at the third user in this flashback, it's pretty clear that he does have a very distinctive similarity to Kirishima, which a ton of you guys have mentioned to me in the comments. When you look at the shoulders of their respective hero uh -huh. costumes, let's not beat around the bush here. The gear shape is literally identical. <gasps> and oh my god. Yup, it's him. They fucking go back in time on a mission, bro. I can't believe this. I, re I, I really hope this is all true. Horikoshi. Horikoshi. If you're watching this, man, just know that I hope you're not trolling us. Cause that I see I didn't I didn't even peep. I just like I didn't even peep with Bakugo. Cause it didn't even occur to me. I never thought like why like I never thought that this story could implement time loops and all that kind of stuff, but And then let's also consider this other fact. Not only have we never seen another character with gears besides Kirishima, but we know that more than anyone else the hero who he most despised to be is Crimson Riot. You'd Crimson think that if Riot. Kirishima was going to copy someone, as far as his hero costume goes, it would be this guy, and not his great-great-great-grandfather, as I'm sure many of you are dying to tell me that this guy is. I got enough of those comments on the right. Bakugo video. Damn. Now, while this pineapple hair does look a little different to Kirishima's usual styles, it's not like every adult has the same hair they did when they were 14. And thanks to this artwork by Rodrigo Sani, we can easily imagine what Kirishima would look like if he had a hairstyle similar to this. And I gotta say, it doesn't look too out of place. But I First of all, characters with man buns, mmm, fire. And w with the ponytail, Lil Jon, yeah, he, he could pull it off, free. When Bakugo was the one, I muted it for Shima a second, even bothered to go back in time. When Bakugo was the one who was entrusted with ensuring that One Fall was created. There are two possible answers to this question. So starting with the crazy theory, what if Bakugo traveled back to the past by himself and had spent his entire life in the past building up One For All, but at the end of it, he found no one he deemed worthy of taking on the power. Bakugo has high standards, guys. We know this. True. What if, in his time of need, Bakugo used One For All as a vehicle in which to send an Eren Yeager-style message to the future? No! <laughs> Oh my god, nah, 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 chill, turtle. In which he tells the heroes that he needs a successor that he can trust before he dies of old age. So when Bakugo leaves this time-transcending WhatsApp message inside <laughs> One For All, this would find its way to Deku in the future, who would receive Bakugo's message in a vision or dream, quite similar to how he saw the memories of the first user of One For All. And after this, just like in Kamino, Deku would realize that the one person Bakugo would want to help him in this situation is Kirishima. And there's no way that the chivalrous hero, Red Riot, would turn down the call of his friend who was literally stuck in the past. Instead, he'd do the courageous thing and put his life on the line to ensure that One For All reaches the present day. Okay, hold on. So, real quick, I just had a thought. Like, if Kirishima is the third guy, what if... It Nah, it couldn't be. I was about to say, what if what if he was Crimson Riot? What if this guy inspired himself this entire time? Now that's fucking crazy. And thanks to the beauty of time travel, Kirishima would appear in the past before Bakugo ever had the chance to die without having a successor. And yes, this is a paradox, but no more so than Bakugo being the second user was a paradox. It's basically like an infinite cycle. It just repeats and repeats and repeats. And it's hard to ascertain where it all originated from. That's the paradox, that we don't know what the quote-unquote first timeline is. But if that was right. all a little bit too convoluted for you, there's a far more simple possibility as to why Kirishima was the third user. What if Bakugo and Kirishima were sent back in time together right. in order to ensure that Bakugo could fulfill his mission 
and perhaps to help him make more rational decisions when trying to convince the first user to pass on his quirk. Very true. In this scenario, things would be a bit different because they'd obviously age at the same rate because they went back in time at the same time. That would mean that when Bakugo becomes an old man, or if he becomes an old man, Kirishima would also be old as well. So the only way for Kirishima to get one for all in this scenario is if Bakugo, like most of the other users of one for all, is killed by all for one and passes the quirk on to Red Riot before he dies. And when you look at this panel of the previous users, it's basically a ritual at this point. If you look at the sixth holder, I mean, he's literally crying with his arm blown off as he's trying to pass oh my on God, the quirk. Yeah. Like, this quirk is cursed, guys. But moving on. We know that Deku will eventually get to use all the quirks of the previous users, which was one of the many benefits of Bakugo going back in time. And the same thing would apply to Kirishima's hardening quirk, as Deku could use it for the final battle with Shigo. Imagine Deku using explosion and the hardening. Busted. Iraqi. Now in chapter 241... Oh, because I will also say that. That was another thing that I wanted to bring up, is that the second Midoriya uses a quirk that he obviously isn't aware of that he has the the capabilities of like that will be the next big like yes this theory is real like indicator like if he uses explosion and if he gets hardening like if he whips that shit out and be like how the hell can he do this boom this theory is correct one of the manga horikoshi put in a harmless joke in which kirishima said to deku that he had mastered his hardening quirk after Deku was tensing up on stage whilst giving an interview. <sighs> now I'm not saying that this harmless one-off joke is evidence of something, but let's just presume that this theory about the second and third- That's a foreshadow! Remember what happened in the beginning of Shippuden? What happened? Kur Kurama, well at the time, Nine Tails Fox, was talking to Sasuke and he was like, Yo, you remind me of Ma Uchiha Madara. Sasuke goes, I don't even know who the fuck that is. And then we didn't hear of him? Until what happened? He ends up being like one of the final bosses of, of Shippuden. Like, come on, guys. That, oh my god. Horikoshi is a genius. Users being Bakugo and Kirishima, let's assume that it is actually planned out by Horikoshi. If that was the case, then panels like this and this are exactly the kind of subtle crumbs that an author who's thinking ahead would plant. Again, I'm not definitively saying that they prove anything, but it's just something to think about. Also, it'd be kind of handy for Midoriya to have these two quirks, as Bakugo says in this panel that the other users didn't really have good ones. And with that said, we've now explained what would have motivated Kirishima to become the third user, and we've also talked about these subtle hints that are alluding to the fact that Kirishima and Bakugo are the second and third users. So with that out of the way, I'm going to move on to my theory about Kirishima's horrific fate oh, no. after taking one for all. And to do this, I want to briefly explain two things. Firstly, we now know that Nanashimura's quirk was called Float, and it basically allowed her to hover in the air, as you would imagine. And this would usually be a pretty unspectacular piece of trivia, until you couple it with the fact that we know All For One killed her, and in the present day we've seen him demonstrate the power to float. Now if this is her quirk, it shows that All For One has no problem harvesting the bodies of previous One For All users, and then using it for whatever purpose that suits him. And with the evidence that we have at hand, all for One's levitation quirk was likely harvested from Nanashimura's body. And I know that okay. All for One calls this power air walk, but just remember guys, this is someone with infinite amount of quirks. We don't even know how many quirks right. he has. That's he true. can combine various different quirks and then give them new names. It doesn't mean that he didn't take Nanashimura's floating quirk. Secondly, it was also revealed in the manga that Kuragiri, who is one of All for One's most loyal and faithful disciples, is actually just a highly intelligent Nomu created from the body of a former UA student who was on the verge of death. After an right. accident, Shirakuma was believed to have died, but Dr. Ujiko somehow recovered his body before he actually did, this. and then took him to a hospital in the mountains. Whilst he was there, he turned Shirakuma into a living, almost like a robot, that loves All for One, blindly serves the League of Villains, and switches off when asked any questions that might incriminate All for One or Dr. Ujiko. This shows us many things. Number one, that Nomu can be programmed to genuinely have affection and love for All for One. Number two, they can look dramatically different from what we previously believed. Number three is that they can be intelligent and actually have uh, long conversations. And number four so is that they can be given Shima? quirks that aren't naturally occurring. Don't tell me this man's about to be a fucking Nomu, yo. I hope that's not his fate. But a rather a combination of previously existing quirks. And now guys, I'm going to tell you how everything I've just mentioned ties in together into the potentially horrible ending for Kirishima. 
I'll preface this by saying that I do not want this to happen. Okay. But let me know what you guys think. In the same way that they did this horrible stuff to Shirakumo, what if Kirishima was defeated by All for One and his half-conscious body was taken and experimented with? What if they tinkered with his body in such a way and tinkered with his mind in a way that they had never done before? Almost like the first prototype for what was to come with Kuragiri many years later. All what right. I'm suggesting, my friends, and I know this is a crazy theory, but hear me out. What if All for One's bodyguard, who has permanently hardened skin, spiked hair, and an unwavering loyalty to him, what if Gigantomachia is what's left of Kirishima? Get the fuck out of here! Nah! Nah, 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 nah. Oh my god, but it makes sense! Dude. Oh my god, that makes sense. Fuck, oh, yo. Yo, that, that's OD. That is ridiculous. It makes sense though. Because Kirishima would, went back in time. And then if he gets defeated, then boom. Everything that, that Toroko was saying right now makes fucking sense. And I see it. I literally see it. Oh my god. Okay. Toroko, you're a genius, bro. Play even further into the concept of a time loop, and I'll show you what I mean. When Kirishima was a kid, he had an encounter with Gigantomachia that left him feeling frustrated, like he was unable to do anything. And he kind of felt like a coward. And in his frustration, he threw a book, which then accidentally activated an old hologram, which was an interview with his favorite hero. It was only after listening to this interview that inspired Kirishima to pursue his dreams of becoming a hero and attending UA, which he had previously given up on. It was only through seeing Gigantomachia and having those events occurred that led Kirishima to then become a hero and go to UA. And after succeeding in his goals, Kirishima would then become a pro hero, travel to the past and become the third user of One for All. He would then be defeated by All for One and have his body and mind tinkered with until he literally became the creature known as Gigantomachia. It may, it, it's literally... <laughs> oh my god! This... Dude, this is crazy. I can't even... I literally cannot even believe this. I cannot believe this. It, it makes... It makes way too much sense. It lines up. This, this, is, this is a time loop, guys. This is a time loop. Things... Like, that we are seeing now, they were all meant to happen. So, therefore, him going back is meant to happen. Bakugo going back is meant to happen. Them making sure that the, the power of One for All gets passed down, the knowledge of it being able to get passed down, is all part of this, this time motion. Like, that's, that's crazy. He would then live on, and the cycle would then repeat itself again and again See? and again and again. See? Yeah, this is probably the darkest theory that I've ever come up with. But then again, All For One is just an awful guy. You can't say he wouldn't do this after what he's already done to Shirakumo and Nanashimura. Even Shigaraki, like he killed his grandmother. Nothing is beneath this guy. What if he took Kirishima's body and his hardening quirk and then built on top of that base by adding gigantification quirks and a lot of other quirks? It would just be so messed up. And I hope it doesn't happen, but hey, I'm just throwing the idea out there. If you look at him, the way his hard body is structured and the way the hair spikes out, I mean, he clearly wasn't born like that. That's this is crazy. Something he's been created in exactly the same way that Kuragiri was. And Gigantomachia does have multiple quirks, one of which could allow him to live for an indefinite period of time, just like All for One. But for those of you who have been paying close, close attention, you'll probably have one burning question. If Gigantomachia is still alive, then the vestige of the previous One for All user, who we're saying is Kirishima, surely that would be fiery as well, just like All Might's one is. And in reply to that, I would say, number one, well done for paying attention. And number two, we literally can't see the third user at all. Like, he's completely blocked out. So maybe if we could see him, if Horikoshi would let us, maybe he would be fiery, who knows? But for whatever reason, Horikoshi thought it was better to have my guy as a black silhouette, where the only thing that you can really make out is his pineapple hair and his shoulder decorations. So as long as the third user remains blacked out like this, I'm just gonna theorize what I want. But now that that crackpot theory is out of the way, Let's move on to a reason why Kirishima actually might not be the third user. Okay. Now, whilst I haven't seen the new Heroes Rising movie yet, it's been reported- My guy. This is a message to Turtle Quirk, bro. Go fucking see that movie 
right now is godlike. That in this movie, we get a good look at all the vestiges of One for All. And whilst the vestige that looks like Bakugo is covered in a red aura and has red eyes, which would be expected, the one that resembles Kirishima has a purple aura with yellow eyes. So the color scheme doesn't really match up here in the same way that Bakugo's does. You'd imagine that Horikoshi has big influence over the color scheme as this was the first ever color representation of the previous users, like we've never seen their auras before. Now the fact that the third user, who if it's Kirishima, his hero name is literally Red Riot, right. uh, it'd be kind of weird that he doesn't have red anywhere, so it kind of makes it seem like it might not be him. But regardless, he may just be hiding it for another time. That's fine. Be sure to let me know in the comments what you think about these theories. Specifically, do you think that Horikoshi is hinting at Bakugo and Kirishima being the second and third users of One for All? And if he's not, then why is he blacking out these vestiges? And also another question, do you think my theory about Gigantomachia could actually be true? Like, yes. is there a chance? But whatever you think, don't forget to subscribe, as I plan to do a video explaining Gentle Criminal quite soon. And I have another theory coming in about the next month or so that will be about the quirk singularity. And with all of that <sighs> said, thanks for watching, guys, and peace out. All right. Turtle Quirk, you're a freaking genius for this. I can't believe... Like, I, totally mind blown at this part right here. Like, this this part of the whole Kirishima theory is literally what, what gives this so much, so much weight. Because not only do we have to wait and see if Deku whips out, like, any of the previous quirks that he hasn't used yet, you know, and we, when we look at that as a as an insight as to like if these theories are true or not, like Bakugo doesn't even have anything else that is currently going on, at least not now or not yet, where we can like that's another hint, like oh like like we he definitely was back in in the, in you know the second user, but Gigantomachia, bro, like. It makes so much sense. Like he took the he took the knowledge that we know of from the Nomus that Nomus can be tinkered with, programmed, drastically changed in their physical, like all that, you know, like given quirks, and like yeah, I don't want that to happen to my boy Kirishima because Kirishima Red Riot, yo, he's OD, he's awesome, like Unbreakable, like that shit is fire, but like on a story level. And looking at Gigantomachia and just like and just understanding how no moves work, bro. Like the only other thing that I have to question then is if 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 Kirishima is in fact the third user and what Turtle Court is saying where he, you know, like unfortunately dies and then gets his body taken, tinkered with, blah blah blah, and then Gigantomachia turns into the Gigantomachia that he is. Has there ever been a point where all for one has he come across Kirishima yet? Has he seen him? Because I feel like because if the answer is no, then that's okay. Because now that I think about it, I don't think he's seen really any of the well, you know what? There might have been a time where he might have seen them like on TV when they was talking about UA and all that stuff during like the like the first season stuff. Cuz you know, at that point he wasn't like locked up. Now he's he's locked up in confinement. But that's what I'm trying to figure out. Is if there was ever a point where he did see Kirishima? Because I feel like if he didn't, okay, but I want to know what happens if he does see him. If he's going to be like I recognize you from somewhere. You know what I'm saying? That would be a huge indicator right then and there. That all this shit is true. Like, that shit would give it away. Outside of, you know, the obvious where Deku uses the hardening and the explosion quirk to therefore prove that this whole time loop theory is actually accurate. And that, oh my god, like, I'm so grateful that Turtle Quirk literally put all this shit together. For us to like wrap our heads around and to just 
think about and really let like, and this one is a lot easier to let simmer and, and to let uh marinate because the bakugo one has a lot that you have to understand at first and the best way that i can explain it to people is to even think of it um think of it in relation to avengers endgame right and this is spoilers for endgame but i mean it's almost been a year if you haven't seen that movie what's wrong with you but i mean look i'm not saying that Hori Koshe took direct influence off of that because, I mean, we all know that he does take inspiration from Marvel Comics. That's that's that that much is already known, and I'm not really sure how much he's read, and I'm not, and I personally don't know what has happened in the Marvel Comics storylines where they have these time loops. I know, like you know, there's a bunch of different comics and stories of. You know, time traveling and whatnot. Like Marvel, the Marvel, the Marvel comic universe is huge, right? But because of the inspiration, who knows? Maybe he did take something from that and incorporate it in his own story. Because this time loop theory would literally line up with all of those things. Now, as far as my explanation with Avengers Endgame, what happens in that time loop, right, is when came the time to get the stones to bring it back to their current reality. Um, so that way they can reverse everything that Thanos did back when, you know, he killed every, well, he, he, he wiped out half of humanity and so on and so forth. Um, then when it came time to put the stones back as, you know, the plan, that's what the plan was because it was like as if the stones never left. So that way that reality from 2014 stayed intact while theirs was fixed. And that way they can live in peace the way they wanted to, right, going forward. However, the one thing that was missing was that Captain America decided to go back farther so that way he could live his life out. And what people might not understand is that right at the moment in the current reality in 2022 or whatever, where um, where they had left to go put the stones back and then um, they came back, but they came back without Cap. And then at that very moment, old man cap at old man steve rogers was chilling there waiting to have that conversation with falcon to pass on the fucking shield right all throughout this time old man steve rogers lived his life out and knew that at this day that's when he was supposed to be there right so if you think of it old man steve rogers was literally he was di chilling in the background witnessing all these things happen to earth happen to everything and he and he knew because he lived through it all already but that's a time loop that 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 there was always two captain americas technically at that point right so think of take that idea that concept that that what happened in endgame and apply it to my hero academia there's literally no difference here that the fact of the matter is is that bakugo and now kirishima are apparently and very, you know, they, I, I'm going to believe that they are going off of Turtle Quirk's theories right now because it makes sound sense. And the reasoning behind it, the, the evidence behind it, flawless. I literally have no qualms, problems, even with the shit I don't want to happen with, you know, Kirishima dying and literally being the the freaking reason and, and the whole, like, look at Gigantomachia, like, that's all, oh my god, like, that's OD. I'm like, I'm freaking breaking my desk over here. But anyway, like, that that that's insane. Like, that's insane. So, like, they were always a part of this, that, a part of this, this time loop, like, this story. Like, <sighs> Horikoshi is a genius. Turtle Quirk is an even bigger genius for figuring this shit out, like, this early on. Because we don't even know, like, the war is about to go on right now in the manga, and we don't... I mean, after, like, figuring all this shit out, I mean, we can only take a guess as to when Deku will start whipping out more of these quirks, but, because so far, I mean, he really, he only started, he only whipped out, like, what, like, one or two? And that's it. So, I mean, as always, guys, we're gonna have to wait and see. Let me know what you guys thought about Kirishima being the third uh, user of One For All in the comments below. Like this video, make sure you click the link in the description so that way you can check out the theory for yourself and like that video. And after you sub to me, make sure you're, of course, subbing 
to Turtle Quirk because this this is that the the man behind the 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 sense. And I'm actually like now before I go on a tirade, not even a tirade, but a, a binge marathon because like I've been a fan of Turtle Quirk for a whole 24 hours, right? And seeing that this dude is so like he he put this theory so well, he like he crafts this theories. I want to know if you guys want me to react to any of these other, other theories right now because this shit is fire and it makes for good discussion. And I actually do like talking about My Hero Academia and I feel like I haven't really done enough My Hero Academia content outside of my reactions that I've done in the past already. So with that in mind, guys, please let me know in the comments. Take care of yourselves. Have a good one. May the power protect you guys. I will see y'all next time.